Why aren't you attending the party? Why aren't you working in the co-working space? Why aren't you supporting my track meet field trip? Don't know exactly where it started that there is this unspoken society rule that every opportunity, event, charity, donation request that we're presented with, we are supposed to say yes, be it from our family, friends, strangers. I don't even know who started it. I can't even tell you when it started, but I do believe it is past time for us to discover the power of saying no. Hello and welcome to Ladies Listen Up. I am your host, Gwendolyn G.R. Houston Jack. So have you ever heard of November, as in no November? I discovered it a few years ago, and it came up because around the time of the holidays, there seems to be, no, seems isn't right, there is far more opportunities to be stressed because of the holidays. November is where it starts and it just gets really bad as time goes on. And so I started seeing people celebrate November, as in I am saying no to the company parties, I'm saying no to celebrating Thanksgiving with family I don't really want to be with. I am saying no to all the things that create stress and chaos for me during this time of the year. And I got to thinking, I got to really thinking about how do we get to this place? Now, I do believe there is a generational learning curve to this because I know from from when I was born and raised you pretty much said yes to everything whether you want to do it or not you said yes to everything so if someone's having a charity function you're going if someone's having a party you're going if someone is requesting a a donation you're going there really isn't a place in there where you get to say no. And as a child, (laughs) as a child of a retired minister at this point, there were a lot of church functions and we were tagging along to every single function, nothing against it, because there was a lot of them. I thought to myself, is there ever a point where we say no? Now that thought didn't come to me immediately. So let me not make it seem as if somewhere in the eighties, I was like, I'm going to say no, no. That was not the case. That was not the case. I didn't really understand saying no to what didn't serve me, but more importantly, to events I didn't want to attend until much later in life. Not There may have been a party or two when I thought, I just don't want to be out there. And I am an introvert. I enjoy people, but in small doses and badges and for short periods of time. I remember maybe like a New Year's Eve party. I thought, do I really have to go? Do I really want to go? Because, you know, as a, as, a, as a teenager, everybody makes New Year's Eve seem as if it's this grand, glorious something. And then when you become of age, you realize it's really not much going on. You would be better off sitting at home watching Dick Clark, just saying. And then 2020 happened. And like for a number of us, and, and I'm, I am certain, I am certain, I am not the only person who went through this reevaluation of life, really started thinking about, where's my time going? Like, I know I have to work, so that's 40 hours, but 
where is the rest of my time going? Am I stuck in traffic? Am I going to and from work? Am I spending time at events with people that I really don't want to spend time with? The relationships I have, I started looking at, are the relationships worth it? And when I say worth it, I, I really do mean it. Like you have to think like you are investing time into these relationships and time has value. So if the relationship is one-sided and not serving you, why do we continue to be in it, to participate, to even have it? So I started really looking at what made sense for me, what brought me joy, and did I want to continue just saying yes to everything because that's how I was raised? Take it back. I'm not going to use how I was raised, because that's not the correct phrase. I'm going to say that is the behavior that was modeled for me. I say yes to everything. You want to be a chaperone? I'll do it. Can you pick me up from work? I'll do it. Can you, like, the, there's a limit. There's a limit to it. But 2020, for me, and perhaps for you as well, became this, let me really stop, evaluate where I am right here, right now in my life. Am I showing up? Am I being present for the activities and the people that create joy for me? Or am I doing everything that just does not I would much rather just probably, I would much rather eat liver. Let me say that. And I am not a fan of the dish at all. I started thinking about where my time was going, who I was spending it with. And I had to rediscover the power of saying no. I believe part of the guilt that women feel, and I'm speaking from a woman's perspective, comes from the social program that we have for women. And, and I've had friends who have said things, and God bless them, it's not, it's not intentionally malicious or offensive, but it is, that women have a way of decorating the home and women have a way of knowing what cookware to use, what knives to purchase, what bed sheets, because we just have a way of keeping home better. Yeah. Now that's, that's clearly, <laughs> clearly, a um, some some sexism related in there because there are a number of men who are interior designers who are not women. There are a number of men who are amazing chefs who are not women who could tell you about designing your home and choosing cookware. We know that. We know that. However, what society presents to us has presented to us is that women have this natural nature for caring for other people. We are naturally born to be caregivers. We are, it's in our genetics, it's, it's in our DNA to want to care for others, say yes to everything, be available for everyone at all times, no matter what. And there are still very subtle messages about women and this behavior, be you a mother or be you not a mother, that message is still there. That it's in your genes that you should just say yes to everything. So let's go back to it. 
let's go back to learning the power of saying no. Easier said than done. And I say that because when I look back at my experiences, I'm looking at the behavior that was modeled for me. And I am not, I am by no means saying that my mothers, my aunts, my teachers, other women in my life didn't have a choice. I'm not saying that. It's a kid. We see what we see. And we model what we see. And we we pick up from what we're viewing and see every day. It's just natural. It's natural. So I'm not saying that, oh my goodness, my mother didn't know how to say no when she never, no, I'm not. We're not saying that. But I am saying that I do believe women, young women, little girls at a very young age are giving this message of be the end all, be all for everyone. And eventually you'll take care of yourself. At some point you'll figure it out. You'll take care of yourself. Okay. So when I started, when I started dating, the first boyfriend, you know, I didn't, I didn't say no to him often. He didn't really ask for much. He didn't ask for much. Now I will say this. I need to go ahead and and make and make a note. I, I have to put an asterisk on this. Because there are, there are some things that it was clear it was going to be no, no matter what. So my nephew was born when I was a teenager in high school. So by proxy, <laughs> I was a teenage mother. And I have to tell you, it scared me straight. I mean, I mean straight, narrow, thin line. It was... Mm, mm, mm. As a matter of fact, I I remember the moment he entered this world. I thought, oh my goodness, I could not stay in in the room. I I was like, I gotta go because I could feel the pains. That's I was like, I can feel these. Yeah, so I had to leave. But when there is a child in the home, when that child cries, everybody hears it. Everybody. When he's hungry, everybody knows. And so I'm sharing this space now with my sister and my beautiful nephew and the family. I mean, it's just, and all I could think was, oh, shnikes. (laughs) I love him dearly. I do. And I recall at his graduation, his high school graduation, I said, you are the reason why I am an auntie. I witnessed all the things that happen with a baby, with raising a child at a young age. And all I could say to myself was, I don't want that right now. Matter of fact, I don't know if I ever want it, ever. So the one no that was constant was the no of no sex. I put on a chastity belt. I mean, I wrapped that sucker on tight. I got the lock. I, I had like probably 10 locks, locked it up, threw all the keys into the ocean. There was not a guy anywhere who could even get me close to saying maybe, not a one. If there is anything I stood on, it was that. I believe wholeheartedly in abstinence because all I knew is that I wanted something different. And I saw all of what I was helping out with and I thought, I don't want that. Not right now, not right now. And then the older I got, I realized, I don't think I want it at all. I don't don't want it at all, no. So that was a no. That never wavered, never faltered. There was never ever a question in my mind that that was going to happen. I don't know about the dudes I was dating. I I can't tell you anything about them. I'm sure somewhere in their head, they thought I can sweet talk her and I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to be the guy. Yeah, that's a no. I'm telling you right now, that's going to be a no. And that's a no that I'm standing on to to the end of time. It is a no. 
So that, that I didn't have a problem with. Funny enough, I didn't have a problem because when I look at the exchange rate, it was exchanging the life I wanted, the future I wanted with what could be. And I'm not a gambler. I mean, I talk about winning the lotto. I never play. How's how's that going to work out, right? The few times I've gone to Vegas, I may pay $5, maybe $20. And then I I like to break even. So I don't play very long. I just like the ambiance. So I'm not a gambler. But when I considered what I would be giving up if something went astray, I kept seeing this future life that I had for myself being what I was exchanging for, I don't know, five, 10, 15 minutes, I don't know, for whatever else this was. And I just didn't feel like it was a fair fair exchange, a fair trade. So that I stood on. Did have a problem there. Where I did have a problem, because clearly there was some issues somewhere. I had a problem saying no to everything else. And perhaps in my head, I thought, I will give these physical items in exchange for this personal pleasure. I'm going to do that instead. That could have very well been my mindset. I honestly can't tell you. All I know is the guys I dated, there was one who wanted a lot of things. He wasn't working the way that I was working. And let's just be clear. I had a part-time job. We were not bringing in the dough. I was living well beyond my means, well beyond my means. Well beyond my means. But yet, and still I thought, If he wanted Claiborne shirts and shoes and socks, I will buy it for him. If he wanted the latest Tupac CD, I will buy it for him. If he wanted the latest book, I will buy it for him. If he wants me to come to the north side of Houston, and mind you, I was traveling by bus. Now, I don't know if you guys know about Houston, but I'm going to say it really quick. Even when I was growing up in Houston, 70s, 80s, 90s, it was an hour to go from the north side to the south side, vice versa. By car, I was taking the bus from the south side of Houston to the north side of Houston. It was the longest ride. But somewhere in my head, I thought, it's the things you do for love, right? Yes. If you wanted money, I bought it. Or I should say, gave it to him. I did a lot of giving. There wasn't a lot of no's. And it even extended into the way I dressed, the way I wore my hair. He would say, hey, you know what? I I like your hair being short, but it would probably be better if you cut it or if you did um, extensions. If you wore this, it would probably be better If you stayed thin, didn't gain weight, it was always something, always something. And I agreed to it. I, I, I agreed to it like, okay. And, and I try to put myself in that position now and you only know what you know at the time. So of course, hindsight is 2020, clearly. But in that moment, I have to wonder if perhaps I was doing these things in exchange for, now, was I trying to buy someone's affection? Of course, that was in there because if it made him happy, then if he's happy, then we're happy and we'll stay in love. Yeah. That's, that was a good chunk of it. And I have to say this particular guy, This particular guy, even when we broke up, because I cut off all my hair, as you can see, and he was not happy at all, said it was the worst thing he had ever seen and that I should relax that 
That's what he told me. <laughs> Put in the other four letters. I thought this is the best thing you could have ever, ever said to me. The best thing. But even with that, years later when he popped up, was visiting New York and said, hey, I'm going to be in New York City. I believe you should show me around. I guess he said yes. Talked, I spoke to the guy I was dating at the time. Spoke to him and said, hey, are you okay with me showing so-and-so around? He's my ex. And, and the guy I was dating, God bless him. He said, uh, <laughs> if you want to do it, that's fine. And I kept going between, oh, do I really want to do it? Do I not? Do I really want to do it? Do I not? Do I really? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I'll do it. Crazy, I know, trust me. Look, when we look back at some of the things that we agree to, all you can do is shake your head and clutch your pearls. Really. Insane. Absolutely insane. Would I be even close to doing that now? Of course not. And even if I wasn't married, because when I was single, trust, we had discovered the power of no. We discovered it. But we go through these situations <laughs> that push us to really stop and say, wait a minute, why, why am I doing this? And that's just one example. One example. And, and I use the love example because I know a lot of us will do things with the idea of love, but it also extends into friendships. I had friends who, when I look back at our friendship, they were not equal. There was a lot of Gwendolyn giving, happy birthdays, happy holidays, supporting the event, showing up for X, Y, Z. There was a lot on this side. Didn't come back. It was not reciprocal. And when I look back at it, it doesn't matter what relationship it's it, that you're in loving relationship, friends, family, there, there is always a place in there when you can say, okay, these dynamics, at what point has it gone too far? At what point do I need to say, let me stop and look at this and make sure that I'm getting what I need from this relationship. Maybe I need to learn how to start saying no. So let's talk about doing the work. Okay. How do you say no? Um, here's how I'm going to tell you to say no. Here's, here's how we do it. You start saying yes to what brings you joy. It's not about the no. I find that we far too often look at fear as the motivator. And the fact of the matter is fear doesn't have to be the motivator. We can motivate with joy. We can motivate with what makes us happy, what serves us, what could be, what's the best thing that could happen. We could start with that versus looking at well, what's the worst that could happen? What could you miss out on? What could you lose? We don't have to work with fear. Fear doesn't have to be the motivator. And so I am advising all of you to operate from a place of yes. Operate from a place of saying yes to what fuels your passions, saying yes to what enhances your purpose, saying yes to what makes you happy, what brings you joy, what gets you out of the bed in the morning, what makes you smile, what makes you cry, tears of happiness. Say yes to that. Say yes to you. <laughs> Let's go with saying yes versus 
discovering all the things that could bring us pain, right? And unhappiness and fear. Let go of that. And when you start saying yes to you, you will quickly realize it's not as hard as it seems. When you get that next event invitation, ask yourself two very basic questions. One, would you enjoy this event? Okay, I do like the movies. I do like Cheez-Its. I do like Sally Sue. Okay. Number two, if you attend this event, is it going to bring you joy? really enjoy Sally's company and I am the biggest fan of Star Wars. I'm going. Great. We're good. If you get to an event and it comes to, and this could be family because family tends to be the one where we feel as if we just have to give in. You do not. No is a complete sentence. Nope. I'm not coming. And you don't even have to explain it, but let me, let me go back before I jump ahead. Let me go back. If you're looking at the event and it's not going to bring you joy, the people who were at this event often cause chaos and cause you stress. That's a no. If you don't want to drive that far, that is a no. If you just don't feel like doing it, it is a no. You say no. That's it. And no is a complete sentence. People often feel as if they have to give an excuse when they say no. You do not. That's the whole point of this. You are saying yes to, I want to stay at home in my bed watching Dick Clark this New Year's Eve. That's it. When you say no, it's like, no, I'm not coming. Why? I don't have to explain myself to you. You're an adult. You're a whole grown person. You don't have to give a reason for your decisions to anybody but yourself. Only you. So when you say no, it's like, no, I'm not coming. You don't have to do the, well, I might. See, I don't do might. If I'm coming, I'm coming. If I'm not, I'm not. And that's it. If I have an event and there is a severe weather alert, that's a no. Because if the weather's out of pocket, I'm not driving in that. I'm not doing it. Why do I want to, like, why put myself in the position when they are talking hail and possible tornadoes and it's at night? It could be in the daytime. It's hail and tornadoes, flash floods. Why would I put myself out on the streets for an event that's not life threatening? No, that's my safety. Why would I do that? Like, ask yourself why we do these things. So no, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody. If it's a no, it's a no. If it's a maybe, here's my thought on that. It should be a true maybe. As in, I have an event and I'm going to leave your event and come to this one. Right? That's the only time when there may be a maybe, but even then you kind of know, it's like, well, I have this one. Do I really want to drive another 15 minutes to this other one? No. If I have to walk around the corner, okay, yeah. But you're going to know. If the day has already started and you're kind of tired, but you have to speak at this event, so you have to show up, and then there's another one, you already know going in, you're tired. When this is over, you're going to probably go to bed. Tell your friend, your family member, whatever. Just say, you know what? This is going to be a no. And you'll be fine. But I do have one suggestion. I do have a book by QB Springer. It says, I am my brand. Right? We have that book there. I highly suggest you read it. It's about personal branding. It's about your reputation, how you show up. So I highly suggest Take a little time, read that one. And there is a topic in there about prioritizing your time. And that is what we're talking about today. Prioritizing your time, putting you first, and that no is a complete sentence. So with that, I want to say this. 
Whatever you choose to do, however you choose to go about this part of the journey, make sure you give yourself the space and grace to grow and learn.